Chapter 17 At the prison, Cameron tapped his foot as he waited, excitement and anxiety racing. Please let this be it, Lord. Let this be the answer. I want to feel like myself again. Soon his father came in and set a few papers on the counter. Hi, son. Somehow he appeared better, healthier. He still wore the orange jumpsuit, though his eyes seemed brighter. How are you feeling? Fine, the same, but how are you? You've you found the answer, he blurted. What do I need to do? Slow down, let me explain. With a soft grin, Cameron took a calming breath. His father grinned back. Like I told you over the phone, I think I may have found something. Now, the part of your brain that stores short-term memory, the prefrontal cortex, it's been damaged. It looks like HPX 200 healed certain parts of your brain to wake you from the coma, but it actually began eating away at your prefrontal cortex. Cameron winced. His father pulled up one of the papers. In one of Richard's notes, he has the word caffeine penciled in with a question mark. And putting some of these other jots and notations together, I'm thinking maybe that's the cause of your memory issues. So you should probably avoid caffeine for a while. Cameron's shoulder slumped. Really? For how long? His father shrugged. Maybe a month? Keep in mind, son, this is only an educated guess. There are no guarantees this will work. But it can't hurt to try. I know how much you enjoy your coffee, but just try it. Keep in touch and let me know how you feel if you see any improvement. Hope swelled inside Cameron, and he smiled. All right, I'll do it. I feel I owe you an apology, son. If I had looked at these notes more closely, I may have been able to prevent it from happening in the first place. No, that's all right, Dad. What matters now is you found a potential solution. His father breathed a sigh of relief. Also, good exercise is vital for our brains to retain short-term memory. Mind games, puzzles, swimming, biking, running. It wouldn't hurt anyone to do those more. Nodding, Cameron took a deep breath. Wow, thank you, Dad. I really appreciate this. Of course. I hope it helps. He set the papers aside. Annika and I are grateful to you for your help and your willingness to help, Dad. It's the least I can do, son. I don't know where I'd be without her. His father smiled. I'm glad you're happy. She's a good girl. The best, he agreed. She looks so much like her mother, he said quietly. Clearing his throat, Cameron took a detour on the subject route. I already got the ring. Really? When Cameron nodded, his father continued. That's wonderful. Consider the house as my wedding gift. Cameron bit his tongue. You are going to move in there after the wedding, right? Actually, Dad, I plan to sell the house. His father couldn't help but frown. There are a lot of memories in that house. Especially for Annika, I'd like to move to a completely new environment. No, you're right. I understand. I really wish you both the best. Thanks, Dad. Believe me, you helping with my memory? If all goes according to plan, that will be the greatest present of all. Sitting beside Annika in the pew, Celia folded her hands on her lap. Maybe I should leave. Celia wondered if the pastor had somehow gotten a hold of her journal. It seemed he was speaking directly to her about her sin and her struggles and her guilt. I should probably leave. But her heart told her to keep still, to keep listening, and to keep believing. The pastor continued. In Isaiah 57, we see God's accusation on the wicked. But later in that chapter, we see God's compassion on the contrite. I will not accuse forever, nor will I always be angry. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will guide him and restore comfort to him. Like the prodigal son, we all have strayed, all have sinned. But if we have a humble and broken spirit, if we fall at the feet of Jesus, he will be there to forgive us, to cleanse us, make us whole, make us his. Celia swallowed, her heart burning. Romans 4, 7-8 through 8 says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. After everything Celia had done, after everything she hadn't done, 
Could God forgive her? Could he love her, be the father she never had? If you would like the Lord to come into your heart, to forgive you, come forward and we will pray together. Could you really be free from it all? The guilt, the pain, the fear, the past. Could it be wiped away in a moment? Celia knew if she stepped forward, there would be no going back. This wasn't filling out a card or reciting a prayer and then returning to the way she was. She saw other people go forward and the pull intensified. This was about a new beginning, a pledge to sacrifice her dreams, her will, her life to the one who had sacrificed his life for her and everyone in the whole world. Though it seemed sacrificing was giving something up, Celia knew it was for her good, her well-being. By surrendering, she was relieving herself of a weight, one that had grown heavier every day. She was ready, ready for that burden to be lifted at Calvary. Rising, Celia brushed away the tears, even though more cascaded down. Making her way to the front, she knelt with the others. Dear God, I'm so sorry for everything. Please forgive me for being so afraid for all my sins. Thank you for your sacrifice, God. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to save me. I want you to live in my heart, to take away all this mess inside me. I want to live for you. I want to be joyful no matter what's going on or who I'm with. Help me forgive the people who have wronged me and help me make things right with those I have wronged. With each sob, each tear, each tremor, each passing moment, Celia felt a peace begin to replace the ache in her heart. The pastor laid a hand on her shoulder and prayed a beautiful prayer, asking the Lord to bless Celia with a new heart, one that was completely focused on him. When Celia stood with the others, she felt lighter than she had ever felt in her whole life. And once she returned to the pew, she didn't know who was crying more, she or Annika. Preparing for their Bible study, Annika set drinks all around the table. Coffee for Stu, herself, Jake, and Crystal. Hot chocolate for Celia. Tea for Cameron. She smiled, imagining his reaction to the flavorless drink. But he had to try. And if it worked, if it healed his memory, it would be so incredibly worth it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for your mercy. Thank you that Dr. Baines was able and willing to help. Please help Cameron heal and resist the urge to drink caffeine. Soon, everyone was seated around the table. What's with the tea, Cam? Stu asked. You want a diet? As a matter of fact, yes. I'm trying to stay away from caffeine. My dad believes it will help with my memory. Really? Jake asked. No caffeine? Celia asked. For how long? Four weeks. A whole month? Crystal shuddered. Ugh, that's awful. Cameron laughed. Yeah, it is. But I'm just glad my dad found something for me to try. Yeah, that's awesome, Stu commented. We've been praying for you, man. Thanks. Picking up his coffee, Stu grinned and inhaled deeply, closing his eyes. Mmm, just the smell of coffee is heavenly, wouldn't you say? Cameron punched his shoulder, drawing more laughs. All right, Stu said. Let's start with prayers of thanks. Celia, you want to go first? Sure. She straightened in her seat. This past weekend, I um, officially gave my life to Christ. In a split second, the room erupted into cheers, hugs, and applause. Annika's cheeks burned from all the smiling. And Annika and Cameron helped me heal by taking me to the kind family so I could apologize. Everyone grew silent as Celia told her story about what had happened in that car on that fateful day. So after all that, I thought they would be pretty upset. It was so hard getting the words out seeing Timothy using a walker, something only the elderly use. But every member of the family was filled with such peace and forgiveness, though they said they didn't even blame me. The whole family is really special, and I thank God for their kind and merciful hearts. And I want to thank Annika and Cameron for taking me, for helping me put all that to rest. Tears brimming, she smiled, glowing. Annika squeezed her wrist. Yeah, and that is the embodiment of what God will do for us when we repent. Always ready and willing to forgive. He doesn't need us, but he wants us. He is always there waiting for us to come home. Stu took a deep breath. 
Wow, praise the Lord. I don't think anyone can top that prayer of thanks, but who wants to try? Everyone laughed. Crystal hit Jake's shoulder lightly. Aw, Jake, are you crying? No, it's my allergies, that's all.